Good morning, Peter Rivo from IHU Strasbourg. I would like to thank uh, Sages for the opportunity to present today. I have no disclosure. Uh, so, mid esophageal diverticula of the esophagus are often associated with a concomitant esophageal motor disorder, which is thought to be the cause of the diverticulum and some of the patient's syndrome. Uh, this is a case of a 67 years old uh, patient presenting with a type 2 achalasia and a mid esophageal diverticulum. The patient complained dysphagia and regurgitation at every meal and a 10 kilograms weight loss, with a consequent ECR score of 9. We decided to treat the disease with a combined POEM and uh, endoscopic septotomy. The patient is uh, uh, supine under general anesthesia and we use the CO2 insufflation. An initial endoscopy is carried out to rule out any esophageal or gastric disease and to take the initial measurements. We use the, the endoflip impedisimplanimetry catheter to uh, um, assess the, um, the sensibility and the compliance of the, um, of the tissues. The diverticulum is, um, is identified and the food remnants are carefully removed to guarantee a clean entry into the submucosal space. Accurate uh, identification of uh, esophagastric junction is essential for an appropriate and successful myotomy. And uh, therefore we injected uh, approximately 0.5 millimeters dye into the lesser curvature of the gastric cardia prior to POEM in order to aid the precise localization of the esophageal, uh, the um, esophagastric junction. The technique of the submucosal dissection for POEM is similar to that carried out during esophageal ESD. So we did an initial longitudinal 15, 20 millimeters uh, submucosal incision and uh, we did it at the neck of the diverticulum and uh, then we carried out a septotomy through, the, um, through all the muscle layer. So you can see. A third uh, smucosa injection is then performed at the, uh, at the distal end of the initial incision to gain access to the smucosa space. as you can see here. Once uh, this is done, the smucosa space is expanded using uh, an injection of normal saline solution supplemented with the 0.3% indigo carmine. The injection is done uh, using a biliary balloon catheter, which uh, facilitates the entry uh, into the tunnel and prevents uh, the fluid to back, uh, to back flow. Uh, whenever it is possible, we privilege the anterior approach to a clock position, since uh, this leads uh, to uh, gain access uh, to the, um, to the um, lesser curvature, and uh, in this way we can uh, preserve the sling fibers of the cardia, which uh, contributes to the anti-reflux barrier and are important in reducing uh, uh, acid reflux uh, post poem Here you can see multiple injection in the submucosal tunnel. And we use uh, a TT knife to do the submucosal uh, dissection. This is followed by submucosal tunneling extending to the gastric cardia two centimeters beyond the esophagastric junction, meeting the dark blue mark uh, created at, uh, um, during the first part of the procedure. It's imperative to avoid injury to the mucosa during submucosal tunneling and myotomy because this is the only anatomical barrier left between the medicinal space and the esophageal lumen after myotomy. So repeated the injection into the submucosal layer allows effective expansion of the space and clearly defines the planes for a, a precise dissection. circular muscle layer. And this is the whole tunnel. The thick inner circular muscle was divided using the TT knife, preserving the outer longitudinal muscle as a safety margin and a barrier from the medicinal cavity. In this case, the myotomy is carried out first distally and then proximally to meet the initial dissection at the diverticular neck. 
This is different from the standard tunneling procedure, which requires a two centimeter intact muscle layer between the starting point of the myotomy and the mucosal injection, incision. You can see the thick circular muscle layer. And this is the, the dark blue area at, um, after the esophagastric junction. So after confirming the uh, sufficient release of the outflow obstruction at the level of the gastroesophageal junction, with the, we use also the endoflip impedance planimetry catheter. The mucosal entry site is closed using uh, multiple clips. So this is uh, the endoflip uh, probe. And uh, it's very important to precise and complete close uh, the, uh, um, the defect because uh, this will prevent subsequent uh, risk of uh, mediastinitis. The combined poem and endoscopic cytotomy approach proved to be safe and effective in the treating this complex case. Uh, the endoflip showed 100% increase of the distensibility and the compliance after the myotomy. The upper GI series on the postoperative day one showed good passage of the contrast and, um, at the esophagus gastric junction and better emptying of the diverticulum into the esophagus. The postoperative course uh, was uneventful and the patient has no residual symptoms uh, with an echo score of zero. At one month follow up, uh, we redid the gastroscopy. The patient was doing very well and uh, he regained more than uh, five kilograms. Thank you. presentation. The, um, when you're uh, approaching the case, what was your rationale for doing the septotomy and the myotomy and maybe in that case just approaching it with just the myotomy and then, and then approaching them later if they needed the septotomy? What was the, what was the thought process there? So, sorry, I didn't understand. Well, the, the question was, is, um, they had symptoms when they were there uh, when they presented, but the question is, is how, you know, what was causing their, their symptoms? Was it the achalasia or was it their uh, diverticulum? And how, you know, how much was the diverticulum contributing to their overall symptoms? So, so then the question is, is you did a combined approach. I mean, when, would you always approach with a combined approach or would you consider doing them uh, well, at a staged approach? This is, of course, approach? the only case that, that uh, we saw so far. And uh, yes, I mean, the, the, um, the symptoms that the patient was complaining were, were attributed uh, both to the achalasia and uh, to the diverticulum. And um, so we saw that uh, it was, we, we thought that it was feasible, a uh, double approach, and uh, that's why we, we did the two of them together. I want to just clarify some, one of the technical steps. So you, you started with the septotomy, yeah. and then you chose the site of the septotomy for the extended submucosal tunnel. Yeah. Uh, and then you closed the submucosal tunnel and septotomy together yeah. with the clips? Yes. Okay. Um, did you consider, so I, I agree with Jim, I think it, in many of these scenarios, uh, we would typically do the myotomy first, and that often will result in a resolution of most of their symptoms. And mm -hmm. as long as the diverticulum is not huge, you can leave it alone oftentimes. But uh, if you're going to tackle them both, and I haven't been in this situation, so I can't speak to it, but did you consider uh, taking your my mucosotomy away from the site of septotomy because now you're increasing the risk of transmural perforation mm -hmm. at yeah, the site starting of septotomy? Below. Yeah, either below or at the different location from that. <laughs> well, I, um, yeah, yeah I, I, I appreciate the, uh, the uh, comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I jumped up for Dr. Romanelli. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a great video.